Natasha, and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, today we are going to have a really fun, quick little three cards, and these are all going to be really quick cards to create. They don't take a whole lot of supplies, which is really important to me, uh, just when I'm sort of going quick and easy, and they are three all really different types of cards. One is die cutting, one is stamping, and one is neither of those two. <laughs> so first of all, we are starting off with some masking magic. Now you need a pen that is going to be waterproof here. Now I figured out that these glaze pens are actually beautiful if you are going to be doing some watercoloring. So I'm going to use that, but you can use any black or fine liner um, pen. It is going to be just perfect. And we are going to draw a bunch of rectangles. You can see that I have the um, piece of masking magic. You could use a piece of washi tape. Remember it if it's too sticky that you need to pop it on your jersey or your jeans first just to take away a little bit of the stick or some mint tape or low-tech tape I'm using the masking magic because I know it is not going to bleed through it and I've got all my little rectangles here we are going to create some hand-drawn candles but we're going to do a sort of messy watercolor look for this. Now I'm going to use some Simon Hurley re-inkers and I absolutely love his um, inks, the color range. They are very bright and very vibrant, which is what I am going for here. For the pink, it is the prom queen. For the blue, it is clear skies. The green is overzealous. The orange is guppy. The yellow is shooting stars. And the purple is crown me. But as usual, uh, with all of the supplies, I will have these listed down below in case you want to check them out or like, take a closer look at them. There will always be links down below in all of my videos. Then I'm just using a water brush or a watercolor pen. You can absolutely use a paintbrush and some water. And I'm just sort of getting a toned down look. Most of them I'm squeezing a decent amount of water in there because these are very vibrant and we are using the reinkers so they are very concentrated versions of the color so i want it to be sort of nice and bright and light at this point now i know that you're a little bit like mm, not sure where this is going but i promise it is going to look gorgeous and i think we have got a pretty cool card in in the finish here so i'm just using uh, some of the colors i have seven candles it doesn't really matter i only have six colors down on my block so i'm actually just going to mix a couple of them together the blue and then some of the pink and we're going to get this sort of gorgeous plum purpley sort of color it i could absolutely just reuse one of the colors as well but either either doesn't matter this color looks pretty good to me and i sort of definitely tried to go outside of the lines this is not perfection at all and then really quickly without thinking too much about the shapes and the position and all those things i'm just drawing a quick flame up the top of each one of them then i will come back in with the most basic of basic orange highlights just not even thinking about it a tiny little bit and people will not even notice where it is now I'm going to come back in with the glaze pen and add in some details into my little candles. You could skip this step, but because this is such a basic card, I think that adding it in really does make a difference. You could definitely take some inspiration from stamps that are around you, or if you wanted to go to the effort of masking each one off, then you could stamp in them as well. Or you could just use like four pieces of mint tape to mask around each one so it's easily adjustable. And that way you could use a stamp on the inside. But I found it just as easy to do sort of random patterns. Some of them are circles and stripes and zigzags and dots. And I just had any, a little bit of fun with whatever patterns came to mind at the time. But this glaze pen works really, really well with watercolor. Now, I don't know why I hadn't thought about using it before um, if you have something that is not uh, waterproof then you could always add a layer of clear embossing powder over top and that is going to make it waterproof um, and then I'm going to quickly just draw around the flames now as I said this is sort of messy watercolor so I have to be okay with them not being um, exactly where the yellow flame is so I just sort of draw a line where it makes sense and not think about it too much and I really like that look now for I just decided to come back in and come in with a little bit more saturated version of the same color 
and go over some of the details. So that means just filling in these little dots here, means going in some of the stripes and then coming in with the um, little crisscross pattern and just coming in with a less uh, watered down version of the exact same color to make things just really easy and really straightforward. Of course, you could do this, just use the, um, the black pen and then come in with even coloring pencils or watercolor pencils, watercolor crayons, watercolor paints. You could come in with inks. You can come in with whatever you like, any sort of markers or pens or alcohol markers, all good things. They're all going to work. Now I'm going to, this is straight onto my card base here. So having the masking magic did help keep my card base together. But look at that gorgeous crisp line that we pull off the masking magic. And then because I have terrible handwriting, it's not something that I am able to um, draw on a card and think it looks fabulous. So I'm going to grab a stamp to go right in the center there. And this card, all of these cards are super simple and don't use too many supplies as I said and so I'm actually going to leave it there I did think about doing a squiggly little line border but I almost think that's a little too much you definitely could cut this down and then add more matting layers and then onto a card base but I was pretty happy that this is that was just a one layer card now we're moving on to the next one already I took three sheets of paper they are from two different paper packs, actually, the Roses and the Sherbet uh, paper pad. It doesn't matter where you get them from, but I wanted three that sort of uh, are all in the same-ish color family. And then I'm going to cut these down. Now, I will show you in a minute that you do not have to be perfect uh, with your cutting, with your aim, because we can adjust everything and no one is going to end up knowing. Now, because I want these to be in certain places and have the pattern be continuous, I am popping them down onto a little piece of mint tape. Now, this is the four inch wide mint tape. You certainly don't need this much at all. Just one strip behind it of low tech tape is going to hold these in place as they are run through my embossing folder because I want all of those three different colors to be um, embossed but I want them to sort of stay exactly where I need them so this is the calming cluster from Altenew I absolutely love this uh, embossing folder I don't have very many embossing folders and this is definitely one that I really really love I've done many 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 videos with it but more importantly it's nice that it's more of a um, an image, a picture, rather than just an all over pattern. Uh, I didn't realize that that was such a big gap in my embossing folders. So this is kind of the only picture or image that I have and I tend to reach for this a lot. Now I have the Waffle Flower Hugs, Big Hugs I think it's called, uh, die set here. We're going really clean and simple for all of these gorgeous cards, but we do want the finer details to be there. So I have run this, the background through with some vellum and then I have also run the hug stay through with some plain white cardstock but I did that three times so that we are able to get a really nice um, thick pattern there then I'm just going to peel off these pieces gently here they come off pretty easy even though they've been through uh, an embossing folder I would probably recommend just using a little less tape to be honest I grabbed what was near me um, and this did work absolutely fine but yeah it definitely presses it into the paper that's one thing I love about the mint tape is that it truly does not rip your paper even though it's been through an embossing uh, through my big shot uh, die cutting machine so it's had a lot of pressure added to it and I was still able to peel it away without ripping any of the paper or the mint tape which is great then I'm going to very lightly press these down with some liquid glue they are really just sitting there because I want to adjust them once I've got all three in place so now I'll go through with each one and move it around and make sure I've got it in exactly where I want it to be I realized that there's a pretty big gap down the bottom and this is where I said that we can adjust things people don't need to know the recipient never needs to know uh, about what we had to do to get the card where it is and so I have this really big gap and I don't need it as much like that. So I'm actually just going to sneak a little slice off the bottom and that will cure all of our problems. My measurements, I am not often one to measure. I like to guess things and just sort of eyeball. Um, and so I will just cut a little bit off this and no one will be any the wiser except for 
you and I. And so once I have that uh, all done, I'm just going to put that upside down with an acrylic block off there to the right so that all of that glue can set. And then while I'm doing that, I will put together my hug sty. I have three layers to make it really stand off that background. And then once I've got the three layers put together, I'm going to put them onto that little piece of vellum uh, background there and that is going to help it stand off the page even though all the dimension we have is just those three layers of cardstock. So this one's still going to go through the mail really nicely. It's still not going to be too bulky at all. There's no foam tape at all, just those three layers. And so I will pop that on my card base and we are good to go. This card is very beautiful and simple and if you move it around it is absolutely stunning. All of that gorgeous texture in the background of the card and I think it's something that people just like to run their hands over as well. The gorgeous texture is absolutely beautiful and I think it speaks for itself on a card like this it really just lets it shine uh, without taking away from it too much if you think that your image is not standing out enough then you could always just ever so gently rub a little bit of white uh, like pigment ink like the hero arts unicorn pigment ink just gently use a flat makeup sponge or a flat finger uh, flat um, sponge dauber or something like that over top and you'll be able to sort of pick up those little pieces and highlight some of the raised portions if you think your image is not quite standing out enough but I was more than happy with how this one had turned out and I think this is just a really gorgeous clean and simple card. Now we are going to move on to the last card in just a second and those people who have watched a fair few videos uh, earlier on in my channel or a few videos ago, you will know that this stamp set here, the Petal Trio by Woodwear, is just one of my absolute all-time favorite stamps. <laughs> I would hate to count the amount of times that I have used this stamp. In fact, that just makes me really proud because it tells me that it was a great investment. It's a great image. It is very, very versatile. And I'm going to show you one more way today that I would like to uh, use this, that you're able to use this one. Of course, you can absolutely look at any images that you have in your stash and you might be able to do something similar by putting several images together or you might just have a gorgeous big one that is similar to like to this they did release um for a while there there was probably half a dozen or so that were similar ish style as in like a little grouping of flowers plus some foliage and for i really love the woodwear ones because they have such a low price point for being such a large stamp um, and the same with all of them so they are my absolute favorites now I did cover this in some uh, clear embossing powder because I used my Versafine Onyx black ink to stamp this image in my stamping platform uh, this image is so big that I do have one acrylic block that fits it but just to make sure I get a good image I tend to do it in my stamping platform now I just want to show you a quick tip here. If you want to cut your mint tape in half or any uh, low tech tape, I just put it on a piece of copy paper and for this one I want it nice and straight so I'll put it down at a little edge of the copy paper. Then I can cut it with my trimmer to make sure because it starts off as one inch and I might want it to be half an inch or I might want it to be a quarter of an inch or, or whatever it may be. But if you pop it onto some copy paper to cut it, and then you are able to just peel off that paper really, really nicely. And then I know I have my uh, perfect sized strips for what I need. And so it just makes it easier rather than having to have lots of different sizes of tapes on hand. The mint tape they only sell in a one inch and in a four inch. Uh, so it does mean that if I want to use that and make it smaller, I just need to cut little strips. Then I'm just going to roughly eyeball these where they're going. As I said earlier in the channel, I'm not a big fan of measuring. I will definitely eyeball things if I can get away with it. Um, it's just my thing, but if you would like to, you absolutely could measure. Now this is directly onto my card base. All three of these have been directly onto my card base, so no mucking about with layers or card fronts or all those sorts of things. Um, we're just popping them down. Then I'm going to take some of the original width, the one inch, and just mask off the sides and the top and the bottom. Remember that you can reuse all of this tape. So once you take it off, once you've just inked over it once, you can definitely reuse it. So I tend to just stick it to my wall beside my crafting space or stick it to um, one of my cabinets. And then that means that it's sort of right in my line of vision when I next want some mint tape. 
I am just going to do some very light um, inking with some Crown Me and some Clear Skies. These are the Simon Hurley dye inks. Any inks are going to work here. You could even just do a light watercolor wash or something like that. Um, I'm just doing a really, really, and I was trying to go pretty light. And even though I went really, really light and these brushes are great for not putting too much on, I uh, overdid it just a tiny bit, although perhaps looking back uh, editing, it would have been absolutely fine, but I wanted it just really, really light. Um, so I'm actually going to bring in a little bit of Minty Fresh, um, which is one of my most favorite Simon colors. But uh, because these are water reactive inks, all I need to do to bring back the color a little bit, take a little bit away, is I give it a really light spritzing of water and then I'm just going to um, soak it up, give it a couple of seconds to sink in and then soak it up with a paper towel. And that way I'm just going to take away a little bit of the ink. Then this is always my most favorite part where you kind of do the reveal. And even though we think there was not too much ink on there, when I take it off, you can see these gorgeous little highlighted piece of ink there with the purple, the blue, and then the sort of um, tealy bluey green color that we have. And I just think this really draws your eye into the center of the card. It makes it just a little bit more interesting. I perhaps could have gone a little bit more with that purple, but I was still pretty happy with how it turned out. I am going to add a little bit of purple back in just to highlight around the flowers where some of the darker areas would be um, in towards the center of the flowers you absolutely could skip this step as well I'm just using a water brush and some of the same crown me purple ink that I used for the ink uh, blending up the top just not introducing a whole new color just exactly the same color as before and then I have a stamp that says best wishes and that comes in with the um, woodware stamp set that the flowers are from so same same and I just stamp that down the bottom and then that is going to be our three cards done for today these are all very very different styles they're using uh, one has the watercolor at the beginning one is stamping and one is uh, die cutting I guess or cutting with a trimmer so all really different styles but I think they are three really gorgeous cards if you were inspired by any of these, I would love to see your versions of them or your cards. And you can do that over on my Facebook page called Come Crafting with Natasha. There will be a link to that down below or you can just search it on Facebook and find it there. Other than that, uh, if you would like to support my channel, I have a link down below to the Buy Me A Coffee website. But thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.